Ooh, spooky. Good morning, reptilians. Welcome and welcome back to the channel. So this week we are doing an in-depth leopard gecko care guide. And I know for a lot of you guys that have been around for a while, you know that we have done one of these already, but it's been about two or three years since I did that. And as I always say, reptile care is always changing. So I thought it was about time that we do an updated care guide for these guys. Also, I was very pregnant and looked super miserable in that care guide. So let's do a more happy one. <laughs> this video is going to be quite a bit longer than the last few videos because I do plan on going in depth to a lot of different topics. So make sure to check the description below if you're looking for something specific and also there will be little cards in the scrub bar like the little play bar thing at the bottom and speaking of geckos before we get started this video is sponsored by iHeartGecko so make sure to stay until the end of this video to find out more about this awesome company let's get started so just to get started, let's quickly just talk about these guys. So leopard geckos are one of the easiest reptiles to own and they're one of the easiest reptiles to find. That's why basically everyone has them on the best reptiles for beginner list because they are super easy. These guys are from the Middle East, so you'll find them in places like Afghanistan, Pakistan, where they will inhabit semi-deserts and arid grasslands. In those areas, they can mostly be found in like rocky crevices or in shrubbery. A lot of people People think that because the word desert is in the name and there's a lot of deserts where these guys are from that they are always on sand and that is not the case. Even the ground of the areas where these guys are found are made of compacted clay and limestone, solid rock, those sorts of material. They do not come from places like this. These are two different kinds of deserts. These guys are crepuscular which means that they are most active during the dawn and the dusk but a lot of people have different experiences with these guys so I've heard people tell me that their leopard gecko is only active at night and I've heard people tell me that their leopard gecko is only active during the day and comes out and basks and all that. Years and years and years of captive breeding these guys has kind of taken out the they're always crepuscular part of the animal and so it kind of just depends on your specific leopard gecko. In my last care guide I said that these guys only lived like an average of six to ten years. Beginner reptiles sadly aren't taken care of the best because people go to Petco and grab a reptile and don't do any research. But if they are properly taken care of, they will live 15 to 20 years. So keep that in mind if you want to get one of these guys. And as for size, they're not a huge lizard at all. They get up to about 10 inches if you get just normal lower geckos. But at reptile shows, they usually have super giants and these guys get a lot bigger. So if you want a bigger leopard gecko, there is actually an option for you, but generally they get up to about 10 inches from nose to tip of the tail. Let's talk about these guys' habitats in captivity. So the absolute bare minimum size for a leopard gecko is a 10 gallon for a baby and a 20 gallon long for an adult. But do not let that size be the end all size for you. Bigger is almost always better when it comes to habitats for reptiles. So if you can get a bigger tank for your leopard gecko, if you want to put your leopard gecko in a 40 gallon breeder, do it. They will enjoy that space. We are actually going to be upgrading Percy to a 40 gallon tank very soon and super excited about that. But absolute bare minimum for one adult is a 20 gallon long. Speaking of one adult, do not house leopard geckos together. Most reptiles are solitary creatures and that is because most reptiles are very territorial and leopard geckos are no exception. In my opinion, it is not worth it, especially if this is your very first reptile. Do not put two leopard geckos together. As for substrates for these guys in this habitat, I use mostly tile for mine just because it is a lot cleaner. It will file down their nails and in my opinion, it looks nice. You can also use things like paper towels, old newspapers. Those will make cleanup much easier. If you want to go with a loose substrate, Percy has a in her tank that is a loose substrate because leopard geckos do like to dig. They will dig. Please stay away from calcium sand. I say it in every single video, so I'm not going to go 
super in debt. Calcium sand is made out of the same thing that Tums are made out of, which is an antacid. So it could lower the acid levels in their stomach and make them unable to digest their own food, thus causing impaction. So please don't use calcium sand. But if you do want a loose substrate, you can do any kind of bioactive substrates. The BioDude makes an awesome bioactive substrate. Lugardi makes a really good one that I've used before. If you are not in the United States, Arcadia makes a really good one. If you do want to go the cheaper route, you can mix any kind of topsoil that doesn't have any kind of manure, no fertilizers, no vermiculite, nothing like that in it with a little bit of sand, not calcium sand. Clay sand works wonderfully for this and you could throw in some excavator clay if you want, but that's what I use at this point just because I paid two or three dollars for this huge bag of topsoil. Percy loves digging in that. She gets it all over her tank and makes a giant mess, but she loves it. Another thing you can use is the sand carpet. So it's like textured like sand, but it doesn't actually come off or excavator clay. Excavator clay is so cool. It allows you to build tunnel systems and hides and stuff directly into the tank with your own hands and it hardens and it won't move once it's hardened. It is solid. So that is another really cool option if you want to go a more naturalistic route. I do highly advise against regular reptile carpet though, just because leopard geckos little toes are super tiny and if their toenails were to get caught on the fibers of the reptile carpet, it could snag and break their toes, break toenails off, all of those things that we want to avoid. You also want to have three hides at least in this leopard gecko's tank. You want to have one on the warm side, one on the cool side, and a moist hide. Leopard geckos need a moist hide in order to properly shed. That is definitely not something that you want to skip out on. And it could be as easy as going to the Dollar Tree and grabbing Tupperware and cutting a hole out of it. And of course, this tank needs enrichment. All reptiles need enrichment. Enrichment is basically just things for your animal to do. Enrichment could be anything. It could be the hides, climbing on hides. Fake plants are fantastic. Branches and sticks and stuff for them to climb because they will climb a little bit. They are not an arboreal creature, but they will climb if given the opportunity. Anything like that is fantastic for their enrichment. So make sure you put lots of things in there for them to do. Since we were just talking about moist hides, let's go into shedding and humidity because this will be a pretty fast section. Humidity for these guys needs to be pretty low between 30 and 40 percent because again they do come from arid grasslands and semi-desert so humidity isn't something that they're exposed to for long periods of time having too high of humidity in that tank for too long could cause respiratory infections which are not good that means your animal has to go to the vet to get treated and we don't want that for them to shed properly though they do have to have that moist hide the biggest issue if you have noticed that your leopard gecko has just got done shedding make sure that they shed all of their toes because if that shed gets wrapped around toes they will lose them it will cut the circulation off and they will start losing toes. Like I said before, that moist hide could be something as simple as Tupperware from the Dollar Tree. Everything that I use will be linked down in the description as always if you want something that looks more natural for the tank. And in that moist hide, you could put wet paper towels. Just make sure that you're taking them out often so that they don't start to mildew and mold. Or you can use something like forest moss, sphagnum moss. That will hold that humidity into that hide for quite a while and you don't have to worry about it molding or mildewing as much as paper towels. I just suggest changing that moss out anytime it starts to kind of flatten you'll notice the difference it'll go from fluffy to just kind of starting to compact down when you notice that just scoop it out and throw more in and you are good to go temperatures and lighting so you want the hot spot of this tank to be between 90 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit with the ambient temperature being about room temperature so in the 70s and if that temperature drops to the 60s at night it's fine they can handle that anything less lower than about 60 degrees Fahrenheit. You want to put some kind of supplemental heating in there. So a heat pad or a ceramic heat emitter works fantastic in bumping the temperatures up or just giving them a warm place to go. For heating the tank, I personally prefer heat pads with thermostats. If you use a heat pad, you have to use a thermostat. And that's just because it gives your leopard gecko a place to go and hide because that heat pad will be under the tank, under their hot hide. And so that way they can go and hide and get their sleep and not have to worry about coming out and basking if they don't want to, especially if your leopard gecko prefers to be out at nighttime or you notice that your leopard gecko only comes out at dawn and dusk, but you can use other things. So some people will use just normal basking bulbs. Again, this is one that I hesitate to recommend, especially if you just got your leopard gecko as a little baby, they're going to hide a lot. And also with just a normal heat bulb, once the day is over, you have to turn that heat bulb off. So again, if 
if your house is getting cold, you have to use some other form of supplemental heating in order to ensure that that leopard gecko isn't freezing at night. You can also use ceramic heat emitters. And if you make sure to put some kind of slate rock or something under it, it will give them the ability to bask and it will also heat up the hide under the ceramic heat emitter. Just make sure if you're gonna use this, you have this in a dome with a dimmable switch because those can get very hot and make sure that you monitor the temperature to make sure that you're not overheating that animal. And of course, ceramic heat emitters can be left on all the time because they emit zero light. And another option is the deep heat projector. Arcadia makes this. It is built to replicate sunlight, but it actually does not put off any visible light. So it's safe to use day and night. And again, just like the ceramic heat emitter, if you have some kind of basking spot under it, or you just have it over that hot spot, it should heat up the hide. If you're going to use a deep heat projector or a ceramic heat emitter, you do have to have some kind of light so that your leopard gecko will stay on their day night cycle. I personally recommend using a UVB bulb for this. I use Reptisun brand, the 5.0 bulb, and that gives them vitamin D like we would get when we go out in the sun. And that helps them metabolize calcium and it helps them digest their food correctly. And it helps to prevent metabolic bone disease. Make sure too, though, every six months, you need to be getting a new UVB bulb for your tank, because even if the light's still on, it may not be emitting the UVB radiation that it needs to be emitting. This for a long time was considered not necessary at all, but leopard geckos are crepuscular. Again, they come out dawn and dusk, which means they are getting some sunlight and there have been multiple benefits shown of giving leopard geckos this UVB bulb. So I highly recommend it. They need a light bulb anyway, so why not just put that UVB bulb on there and go ahead and give them what is better for them. Next up is feeding these guys. So leopard geckos are completely insectivores. They only eat bugs. They do not need vegetables. They don't need fruits. They just need bugs. It is very important that you vary the bugs that you give your leopard gecko just to make sure that they are number one, not getting bored of their food because reptiles will get bored of eating the same thing over and over again. And also the more bug variety you are giving your leopard gecko, the more different vitamins and minerals and stuff that they are getting. If you want an in-depth guide of all different kinds of bugs, I will leave the link there of a bug guide that I did with Lizard Guru for Percy and Winter, when I got them, they would eat between five and 10 mealworms a day, these small mealworms, or they would eat about five to 10 crickets a day, or five dubia roaches a day, just to give you kind of an idea of them and what they ate. And then as they get older, you're gonna want to start lowering that. So when they're about six months to a year old, you are going to lower that to every other day. And then after a year, it's gonna be kind of dependent on your leopard gecko. So if you notice, that your leopard gecko is looking kind of chunky, if they are storing fat under their armpits or their tails are getting bigger than their bodies, make sure that you are feeding them less. Go back to every three days if you have to. If you notice that your leopard gecko is staying on the thin side, stay at every other day. Just kind of play that one by ear. You're also going to want to make sure that you are dusting their bugs with calcium supplements or vitamin supplements. As babies, make sure to dust their bugs with a vitamin supplement two days a week. And the other five days, you can do calcium. If you do not have a UVB bulb, make sure you're using calcium with D3. If you do have a UVB bulb, you can use calcium without D3. As babies, I like to dust their bugs with calcium with vitamin D3 once a week, even though they did have a UVB bulb. But that's just because I wanted to make sure that they were getting everything they needed because mine don't really come out and bask. And then as you switch to every other day, you can dust their food with vitamins once a week and the other days can be calcium. And as you switch to every three days, you can dust them with a multivitamin once every other week. So basically once every third feeding, I think it comes out to and do calcium the rest of the time. One really cool thing with leopard geckos though, is that you can put a small bottle cap of calcium into their tank. And if they are low on calcium, they will consume it. And that's a really cool thing that you can do. Make sure if you do that, you are using just straight calcium, doesn't have vitamins in it. It doesn't have D3 or anything like that in it, just straight calcium. Make sure that you are monitoring them. If you notice that your leopard gecko is just consuming nothing but calcium all the time, if they're cleaning that dish out and you know 
know that you're dusting their food and you know that they have a UV light and they shouldn't be doing that, take the dish out because they could be overdosing themselves on calcium. That's not a very super common thing to happen, but just something that I felt needed to be pointed out in the care guide. And also make sure you are keeping a fresh water dish in their bowl too, because they will use it and make sure that you either treat it with RepiSafe or it is dechlorinated water so that way it is safe for them to drink. Tail loss. Leopard geckos can lose their tail, but they do grow it back. So I felt like this was important to throw into this care guide because my leopard gecko lost her tail and it wasn't really something that was covered that much at the time in care guides. Make sure that you're being careful. If you are letting your child or a child handle your leopard gecko, make sure that you are watching them. Make sure that they're not grabbing the tail, pulling the tail, holding the animal by the tail because those things will make your leopard gecko lose their tail. Also make sure that there's nothing in the tank that could catch their tail. Make sure that every Everything is sturdy, nothing can fall in that tank. If they're shedding and they're having a little bit rougher time than normal shedding, if it gets wrapped around their tail and they yank, they will pull their own tail off. Their tail does grow back, but it does not look the same. It doesn't move the same. Nothing is the same. They look like little turnips at the end and it doesn't have that sway motion that leopard geckos have in their tail. All that's gone because the bone is actually gone in that tail. The tail itself grows back, but the bone does not. And the last section we're gonna talk about is actually getting your leopard gecko. So where do you get a leopard gecko? As I said in the beginning of the video, they're basically available everywhere. You will see them at local chain pet stores. I advise against buying from chain pet stores because they buy their reptiles from reptile mills. And by you going to the pet store and buying that animal, you are telling them that that animal sold, they need to order another one. So please don't buy animals from chain pet stores. But the point is that everywhere sells them. You can get them online. There's breeders online. You can go to morphmarket.com and choose from all different morphs of leopard geckos. Places like Craigslist, Facebook, Instagram, all of those places will have breeders of leopard geckos or people rehoming leopard geckos. Local family owned pet stores sometimes will work with local breeders and you could get locally bred leopard geckos or sometimes they can just put you in contact with a local leopard gecko breeder. Reptile shows are always a safe bet. They're always going to have leopard gecko breeders and lots of leopard geckos to choose from. If you go to repticon.com, they have a list of all the shows that they travel around to. There are also just local state reptile shows. Here there used to be one called the Dixie Reptile Show. There's also one called the Huntsville Exotic Pet Expo. So just search up your city and state name and reptile show and see what comes up because there will probably be things. But make sure when you are going to get your leopard gecko or when your leopard gecko is coming into the mail to you, make sure that you have looked into what a healthy leopard gecko looks like. You want to make sure you're not picking up a leopard gecko that's already sick, that may have parasites, that may have something like Enigma syndrome. Make sure that you look into specific morphs that you are interested in. Make sure that there are no morph related, gene related difficulties that these leopard geckos may have. Make sure you are looking into all that. That is one of the key reasons that it's super important to be prepared before you get your animals. And as with most other reptiles, make sure that when you bring that animal home, you leave it alone for the first week. Let them get settled other than to feed and water them, obviously. Make sure that everything is set up before you get your leopard gecko and then leave them alone for a week before you start trying to handle them. That is all of the sections, but really important end note, if you notice or you think that anything at all is wrong with your leopard gecko, maybe they've stopped eating or they're lethargic, if they're wounded, if they are losing weight, maybe they're even having seizures, make sure that you take your leopard gecko to the vet. If you're worried about your animal, please take them to the vet. I get a lot of messages about people being worried about their animals, and unfortunately, I can't get to all those messages messages or I can't get to all of them in a timely manner and I'm so sorry. Please take your animal to the vet if you are worried about them. But that is it for this video. This was a long video but hopefully it was in-depth enough and helped you if you are getting your leopard gecko or you just got your leopard gecko or you are preparing for a leopard gecko in the future. Hopefully this was helpful. As I said at the beginning of this video, this video is sponsored by iHeartGeckos. iHeartGeckos is a company that is awesome because they make conversion kits. These are conversion kits for arboreal geckos, not leopard geckos, but I thought geckos 
videos, it kind of went together. Conversion kits are really cool. They allow you to take any old fish tank that you may have laying around, that you may have gotten secondhand or for free or used for fish previously. And you just put this kit onto it and silicone it in and it makes that old tank into a vertical tank for an arboreal animal with a front opening door and ventilation. So super, super awesome. They're awesome. I cannot recommend this company enough. Make sure that if you order one of these, you leave Els Reptiles in the How Did You Hear About Us box on iHeartGeckos.com. Thank you so much to iHeartGeckos for sponsoring this video. As always, if you have not already, please feel free to follow me on my other socials and like, subscribe, and hit that bell for notifications every single time I put out a new video, which is every Sunday and some Wednesdays. This week's Instagram shout out goes to Chrissy Love 0725 for following me on Instagram and going through and liking a whole bunch of my stuff. And this week's subscriber shout out goes to Leah Lovely for following me for quite a while now and being super active in the comments and my community post and all that. Thank you guys both so much. You are the bee's knees. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye. So I'm honestly just so happy that I found this shirt. <laughs> definitely get, but definitely get a bigger tank if you, but definitely, but I would definitely not to be able to digest. I don't think you can hear the train. Okay. So two days a week and the other five, how many days are in a week? Who knows?